Well, this one is called the silent killer because warnings are really rare. But of the one million people who do suffer from a brain aneurysm every year, almost half will die and only a third will recover without having a disability. In our HealthCast today, we're going to look at how doctors are now working to help patients survive and even thrive with an aneurysm. 74-year-old Brian O'Donohue is a Fort Lauderdale retiree who loves to golf. His game was cut short in November of last year, though, when he suddenly got sick. I had a wicked headache. I had the worst headache of my life. I, I, you know, I knew something was up. Seconds later, he passed out and was soon being rushed to the hospital, where he underwent a full workup, something that in years past wasn't always done. So the same kinds of headaches that people presented with, you know, 20, 30 years ago, they were not investigated properly, and people end up having Henry's ruptures. Dr. Celso Agner, an interventional radiologist with Broward Health, says there are several factors that can affect the formation of a brain aneurysm, which he describes as blisters on the blood vessels. Some of those are you know, behavior problems, like uh, issues such as uh, smoking, blood pressure problems, the stress level, uh, pollution, and you know, all different kinds of situations that actually will increase the chances of an aneurysm formation. There are non-invasive ways to detect an aneurysm and determine if it's at a risk for rupture, leading to a variety of treatment options involving clips or coils to close off the aneurysm and possibly stents to divert the blood flow. We are looking more into the, the flow within the arteries, the size of the arteries, and the characteristics of the aneurysm. So even if you have a small aneurysm that is, looks unstable, in other words, has a blister, has multiple lobes and multiple little forming, uh, aspects of it, he can increase the chance of a rupture, and then those are more predisposed for treatment. Brian was hospitalized for six weeks, then faced another three weeks of patient rehab. It has been a long journey to get him back to doing what he loves. I'm not as up to where I was before. I'm not playing as well, obviously, but I'm playing well enough to know that I will be back to this game. And we should tell you that smoking does increase your risk of an aneurysm, so quitting is a clear benefit. Some blood pressure medications may decrease the risk of an aneurysm in people who have hypertension.